Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, Gordon heads to the Hamptons for some traditional Irish fare. Spring rolls with mustard. But finds a family pub that's lost its way. Get out of here. It doesn't feel like a pub at all. The father's struggling to keep it together. We're in trouble right now. Get out of here. Watch your mouth. Get out of here. But the sons are pulling it apart. You don't listen to anything I want to say. You almost want to tell them to shut up. One hides behind the bar. I do my job. Everybody's happy at the bar. Everything's good. The other is drunk with power. Enough. Get out of here. Get out of here. And the food they serve... This is lethal. ...has sent the locals packing. We have to work. I mean, really dig deep to get these locals back on our side. Chef Ramsay's not the best cook in the world. He thinks he knows everything, whether he does or not. If Brian wasn't my son, I'd have fired him. You got an issue? Get out of here. With only one week to turn it around... You can move faster, yeah, let's go. Will Gordon be able to find this family's pot of gold? Every day you have to give it your best shot. Or has the luck of the Irish run out? I don't see how this is going to work. We're screwed. That's coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. The Hamptons is a beautiful getaway for the rich and famous in the summer. But in the winter, it's a quaint village inhabited by a tight-knit community. Among the many eateries here is Finn McCool's, a family restaurant, which is unfortunately dying. Gordon Ramsay is here to breathe new life into it. I know it's winter, but God, you'd think there'd be somebody around here. This place is desolate. There's hardly anybody around. Come on! Uh, we got a lot of crap uh, in the show. Hey. There he goes. I'm the owner of Finn McCool's Family Restaurant, an Irish pub. My young love said to me. I was a police officer. I worked for the Southampton Town Police Department. I was there uh, over 20 years. Already? Well, this should be moved over here a little bit. And I retired. And uh, I was retired for uh, 12 hours, eight of which I slept. And then we opened up. Finn McCool's family restaurant. We are a family. I mean, that's what we're all about. That's who we wanted to cater to. Both of my sons work here full time. And Jason, he's uh, the bar manager. What's up? Everybody's happy at the bar. Everything's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My problems are more my brother. I'm going to yeah. kick you right in the teeth, I swear to you. Help you out. Get out of here. What do you need me to do? I would definitely not recommend working with family. No, it's a pain in the ass. You're an ass. I swear to Christ you are. I'm very good at what I do. I don't know if my dad and my brother could survive without me being in the kitchen. Go away. Hey, you go away. He is an arrogant little bastard. <laughs> I developed the name Chef Shortcut for him because he just cuts corners. He'll deep fry bacon and they come out like pig's tails. It's like chewing a bacon ball. It's, it's absurd. I'm in charge of the food and I have my name behind it. I know what can work and what won't work. He can be pretty cocky at times. You're so full of crap. There are times where he's very disrespectful. So All right, look at me. No. I swear I won't I'm look at you. To the point where I, I I can't believe the things that he says. What do you need it for? I can throw it at you. Brian and Jason uh, butt heads a lot. He is back. It comes pretty close to blows. Man, so do I. Well, tell him to stay the fuck out of the kitchen. Jason, you know, tries to talk to him. Brian's all, his ears closed down. No, no, you don't know what you're talking about. Whatever, curl off. This isn't nursery school. I don't really give a shit about their feelings. It would be great to have somebody of Chef Ramsay's caliber come in and show Brian that he's not right. <laughs> I don't need help cooking. Before, I would just leave the kitchen and let him go on his way. But the business is, it's floundering. There's no way of anybody knowing that it was a restaurant. We, you know, we put signs in the windows and things of that nature, but uh, still haven't gotten a sign out front. I mean, we just don't have any money. But he is in debt somewhere in the hundreds of thousands. My father's invested everything he has into this business. His whole life as a cop and, and retirement and pension and this and that, it's gone. I absolutely worry about Buddy's health. I worry a lot about his health. It's not my boat, and I don't want to go down with it. I don't understand why he thinks he can be the way he is. <laughs> if it doesn't work, he, it scares me to think how much, not only does he lose, how much everybody loses. We need this for our families. I'm worrying every night going to bed, are you going to be able to pay this mortgage? 
and try to just barely scrape by and make it happen, I can't describe to you how stressful that is. I can't. Funeral calls to help a family that are in crisis, and uh, bloody hell, it looks like a funeral parlor from the outside, not a restaurant. God, so grim. Hello. Hi. How are you? Buddy Mazio. Good to see you. My first impressions of Chef Ramsay were that he's an intense man. I didn't know if he was going to be some kind of a bastard or an ego man or something like that. This is my son, Jason. Jason, nice Boy. to see you. Nice to meet you. Good. Hello. This Hi. is Carol. Carol, nice to see you. My first impression of Gordon, I think he's adorable. I would love to get my hands on Gordon. This is my daughter-in-law, Melissa. Melissa, this hello. Is Jason's hey, wife. Nice. My son, Brian. Chef, Pleasure. how are you? Are you well? The first time I saw him when he came in, I was definitely a little skeptical. I do my own thing back here, and I'm very content with that. So let's start with Carol. What's the problem? We have problems with staff. We have problems with Brian. OK. He's a bit arrogant and a lot arrogant. Because I, I say what needs to be said, and you Peter people don't want to hear it. Too bad. That's not true. We're here to make money. Yeah. And if you're not going to do your job, get out. I'm sorry, Brian, but it you're does stem. Me. It's, it stems from him, because he won't listen to Buddy. An example like Valentine's Day. I wanted him to do a nice Valentine's Day menu. He didn't see the need for it because we're an Irish pub. He didn't think anybody come in for an Irish pub for Valentine's Day. It's half the about it. It's half the years. It's the night before Valentine's Day. Well, they say we want to do a it place. It wasn't the night before. It wasn't the night before. Wait, wait, wait. wait, 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 wait it's not true. It's not true. Talking about two weeks before. Talking about a week before. No, 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 no. You just never want to hear it, but it's too late for me to order. But it's your responsibility to have come up with it weeks before because you are the head chef. We don't want to advertise. Get all this advertised. Come on. Oh, boy. Right now, I'm hungry. I want to taste the food, and let's meet after, shall we? I was pretty nervous. I wonder what he's going to see. I wonder if we're going to get really blasted, <laughs> you know? There's our lunch Love. menu. Thank you. I'm like, I'm about to serve Chef Ramsay. Like, this is so cool. The clams, are they fresh clams? Um, honestly, it's frozen. I'll start with the, uh... Fin the spring roll, please. Good choice. Thank you. Can I go for the salmon as well, please, darling? For main course, I'll have a shepherd's pie, please, I think. OK. Thank you, Melissa. You're welcome. <coughs> I, l I want to see you and Ramsey uh, chug. Chug. Yeah, yeah. Oh, smoke him. Tuck him in the bed. Good night, chef. Good night. <laughs> I'm a very confident person, and I've been in the kitchen for a long time. I'm almost positive we'll get a good review. When you get a family business right, it goes on for generations. And here, it doesn't feel like a family-run business at all. Pubs are full of atmosphere, fun. It's got tweed neck curtains, like you're going to visit your granny. Weird. Here you are, some spring rolls with Coleman's mustard. Wow. Go on. Very strange, bizarre looking spring roll. Are they popular on the menu? Um, people really like them. No doubt half the customers are drunk. This is the tough half hour of my life. Not a big hit. You like it? No. Brian's in the kitchen, like wondering. I'm just like, nope. Are you kidding me? He really thought that. I was going to walk back there and be like, he loved it. You know, he, he wants you to come work for him. Come on. Let me try that one. Let me get you some clean silverware. Thank you. Go on. And what's this stuff with, please, uh, Melissa? On top is a balsamic reduction. He likes to use that a lot. He likes that, doesn't yes, he? Yes, he does. Yeah. He On everything, he puts a little drizzle on. A little? <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Always the sign of a very insecure chef when he macerates everything in pulse wound vinegar. Look at this. Ah, horrible. Doesn't taste of salmon at all. Off through? Does my shepherd's pie have any pulse wound vinegar? No. Good. Lovely. I don't even think he likes the water. He said, um, 
will my shepherd's pie have any balsamic vinegar on it? I said, I can assure you it will not. Do I? Do I dare? I don't like to come off conceited or cocky. I'm very good at what I do. I know the back of the house very well. I've done everything that's out there. Let's try that one. Enjoy. Thank you. You're welcome. It's just a big ball of grease. Just very, very greasy. <laughs> oh, God. <coughs> That's disgusting. Tony? Second door on the left. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, my God, something made it made him sick. I don't know if he went in the bathroom and threw up, but he ran in, he ran into the bathroom. <laughs> oh, my God. Coming up, Gordon digs up the dirt on Brian. Disaster. And lets him know what he thinks of his food. You need to seriously take a grip of your business. But Brian doesn't want to hear it. You almost want to tell him to shut up. Get out of here. Get tell me, get out of here. Who would you care to take it? Take it then? And Buddy wants to take down his son. You got an issue? If Brian wasn't my son, I'd have fired him. And if things weren't bad enough, I worry about Buddy's health. That's coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. <laughs> After suffering through the best Finn McCool's has to offer, it's time for Gordon to have a little chat with the chef. Clearly, we've got issues. When a chef can't make a fucking shepherd's pie, it worries me. My shepherd pie was taught to me by, you know, somebody who learned it from somebody who went to Ireland. You know, it's an American Irish pie. Tastes like cough mixture. And then the salmon. What on earth was going on there? The salmon dish that I put out to him always had rave reviews from everybody that's had it. You could be eating tuna from a can. It was that overcooked. Was that you at your best? It was me doing what I do is I cook for you. I'd imagine the way that I would have cooked for somebody that would come in tomorrow night that I don't know. Every day, you have to give it your best shot. He has no idea what he's talking about. So whatever he has to tell me, I don't really care. For a restaurant to survive in the Hamptons, it not only needs the vacation business in the summer, but a loyal local following all year round, especially in the winter. I'm at the fire department. What better place to actually find out what is Vin McCall's really about? Morning, guys. How are you? Hi. Sir, how are you? Good to see you. Are you well? I'm Rick Schultz. I'm the chief Rick? here. How nice are you? to see you. Very well, Thank you. Welcome to the neighborhood. Yeah, very happy to be here. Tell me about Finn McCall's. Uh, a lot of fried food. Really? Um, yeah. Fried food? A lot of, maybe a little too much on the fried food. What I'd like you to do, um, if you could come back and come and have dinner there as my guest. Um, these guys here have got their fingers on the pulse in the community, and you've got to look after the locals. What better locals to keep on your side? The firemen. Piss them off, you've pissed the whole town off. After inviting the firemen to dinner, Gordon decides to do a quick investigation of the kitchen. This shelf, when was the last time somebody actually wiped it down? Did you eat that? Nastjokes. This is lethal. What, 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 what is that? So God knows how old was the shepherd's pie that I had lunchtime. Please tell me, people do not eat that. Cooked chicken wings, raw food against cooked food. What on earth? What is that? Ah. Uh. Oh, for God's sake. Kitchen nightmare. This is a kitchen disaster. <laughs> there is one clean thing in here. Disappointed by the state of the kitchen, 
Gordon is questioning the family's commitment to their restaurant. OK. I went through the fridges and I was pretty disgusted. Brian, you need to seriously pay a lot more respect to what you're doing. And the first thing we're going to do this morning, whether we like it or not, yeah, all of us, is we're going to clean. I was a little offended. I always consider myself to have a pretty clean kitchen. Me, you, and you, we're going to clean the kitchen, yeah? Everywhere, yes? It pissed me off. I don't dirty that kitchen. I don't cook in that kitchen. So I don't want to go into his kitchen and clean it. All out, off, soaked, and we get all these changed and in. Quite frankly, I thought we were pretty clean. Clean. It, it was uh, it was frustrating and uh, definitely embarrassing. But uh, even Chef Ramsay had some gloves on. He was cleaning. I think that was more impressive than anything to see him being as hands-on as he was. Guys, underneath there. What a difference. The kitchen has been cleaned just in time for dinner. If only there were some customers. When we're struggling like we are now, it'll drive you crazy. Why don't more locals you know, come? Maybe they've come here and had a bad experience and didn't want to come back. Thankfully, the local firemen have decided to take Gordon up on his invitation. Hey, good to see you. How are you? Good to see you. It's now crucial that Chef Brian take advantage of this opportunity to impress the local firemen. I'm going to try the hot corned beef sandwich. I'll have the salmon. Order in. What is that? Nachos. Nachos. Can't wait. When was the last time we got fresh vegetables in the house? Last summer. Last summer. Now, I just cringe when I see them, that's all. I developed the name Chef Shortcut for him because he just cuts corners. Yeah. What are they, Brian? Baked clam casserole. Do you buy the clams frozen? You can't get fresh clams? Yes, I can. I have a big problem with Gordon hanging over me, watching every step. When I'm doing something, leave me alone and let me do it. Forty-five minutes into dinner service, and the firemen are still waiting for their food. <laughs> Seventy-five percent of the time, I go back into the kitchen. My brother's on a cell phone. I say, how are you cooking? I'm not even looking at what you're doing. How could you possibly be cooking and doing this when you're sitting there chatting on your cell phone? When the firemen finally do get served, it's just dry. they're not impressed. Oh, thank you. Is there something wrong? It's not hot enough. Uh, Brian, two seconds, please. So, guys, this is Brian, the chef, yes. Have any of you met? No? These guys are your locals. Start off with your pie, please. How was it? It wasn't warm enough. The flounder was frozen. It wasn't very flaky. Since it was an Irish place, I went with the hot corned beef sandwich he had, but it seemed to be very dry. He's a volunteer fireman. I do this for a living, and for somebody to critique me who doesn't even really do it for a living, it, you know, you want to tell him to shut up? Thank you. Okay, cheers. You can bet your butt they won't be coming back. So I was just like, I don't see how this is going to work. After feeling the heat of the firemen, Brian and sous chef Francis get back to work under the watchful eye of Gordon, who can't believe what he sees. Francis, Francis, Francis. Francis, fuck me, he's deaf as a fucking bat. Darkness. He took it off the floor, put it in the fryer, and then back in the sauce. Yeah, well, the fryer is going to, uh, it's going to take anything that come off the floor. It's going to. Yeah, but it fell on the floor. Yeah. You put it back in the fryer. Right in the fryer. And that cleans it. It cleans it. Sterilize it. Sterilize it. Yeah, well. Fuck me. Sterilized it. Yeah, we did all that. Dropped the wing on the floor. Picked up, stuck it back in the fryer again. We're trying to keep everything consistent, but some things get messed up every now and then. What the fuck were you thinking? Oh my god. I've never, ever, ever seen anything quite extraordinary as that. He serves food off the floor, then serves it to the customer. 
Oh, my God, no. Still to come. If Brian wasn't my son, I'd have fired him. Get out of here. A family feud sends Brian over the edge. Get out of here. Would you care to take care of this ticket then? Get out of here. Coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. It's day three, and knowing full well that Finn McCool's is the lifeblood of the Mazio family, Gordon is about to find out how desperate the business really is. If there was no significant improvement, how long could you afford to stay open for? We're in, we're in trouble right now. You know, we're probably, I would say, $5,000 a week or $4,000 a week under what we need to survive. Under? Yeah. So 20 grand a month? Yeah. Just recently took a little personal loan from a friend, and I pay him back, you know, that kind of thing, just to get us through this dreadful period here. You know, I don't sleep well on people money. You know, it's not, it's not what I do. I haven't taken a check yet. You haven't paid yourself yet on the business? I get my checks in the safe. Got a stack of them. Cover quick love. But the boys get paid, buddy. Yeah, everybody yeah. else does. But these are. You and know. you can't you can't cash them. No. I've never lost anything. I've always been relatively successful. Buddy's basically put everything into this place. By this place not doing as good as he dreamed is is just breaking him. Um, difficult <laughs> having two sons in the business. Do they know the situation you're in? I think Jason understands more. Brian's out on an island a little bit. Um, if Brian wasn't my son, I'd have fired him. Ready? Yeah. If this doesn't work and it does close, what will the boys do? This is, this is my, you know, our it's entire it. family yeah. lives their lives. Out of I, can, I, I can feel it. Yeah. You know, my sons eat their dinner because of Finn McCool's. You know, their houses are warm because of Finn McCool's. And to think that we would close, it would be catastrophic. With a full understanding of the financial picture, Gordon turns his attention to the food, beginning with teaching Brian how to make a proper shepherd's pie. Right, give me the uh, large tray uh, that we put in the fridge to set, and we'll put the potatoes on there. Put it in the oven, four or five minutes. To have them come to your place and show you what you should be doing the right way. Put some cheese on there, grill it, and then get them to taste it, okay? Yeah? To be honest with you, it made me laugh a little. Drain off that fat. And that's what I got upset with you on the other day, that, uh, I mean, add that into the mince, into the bowl. <laughs> to think that we are fortunate enough to be schooled by a man like Chef Ramsay, boy, you'd be a fool not to, uh, not to jump on this. Mmm. Let's go in the dining room, shall we? OK. So I just want you to uh, have a little taste of Finn McCall's shepherd's pie, yes? Rich, ground beef. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's good. <laughs> Ours originally certainly had more, much more of a brown sauce to it, and it was fatty. Mm -hmm. Then Gordon brought out Brian's old shepherd's pie to compare. This is a bit of a before and after. God, that's horrible. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> I thought our shepherd's pie was halfway decent. It wasn't. It was terrible. Our new shepherd's pie, it's fantastic. It was very, very good. I come out looking like the asshole of the family. It was uh, tremendously pissed off. After being humiliated, uh, Brian goes to the bar. Hey, cheers, guys. Good to see you guys. Thanks for coming out. <laughs> and it hasn't happened yet. I take it easy today. I take it easy. People see Brian has taken advantage of me all his life. If he wasn't my son, I'd have fired his ass out of here. I know you buddies are outside, but I don't expect you to be running back and forth every time to go talk to your friends. Seriously. OK. I'm serious. All right. I'm not kidding. I said, all right. Enough. I lost. Get out of here. Let me do my job. Stay back here and do your job. <laughs> Chill out. Nobody wants to get yelled at that they're not doing their job properly. I'm not going to stick around for it. Why are you standing right there? I definitely, once again, felt like a little kid getting yelled at. I'm, I'm fucking standing right here. I'm doing what I got to do. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Get out of here. Yeah, Would you care to take care of this ticket then? I didn't even want to be here anymore. Uh, I don't know if I wanted to be in the kitchen anymore. Never mind here. Fuck off. Yeah, 
I'm done working here. That was horrible. He's stubborn as a mule. You know, he's just absolutely stubborn. And he just disappears. Brian's departure has left the restaurant without a chef, and Buddy is forced to run the kitchen. Spring rolls. 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 Spring Buddy, 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 no, know, no, 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 buddy, you have to take some ammo, man, it looks like a crock of shit. I know. Start again. Buddy, you happy with that bacon there like that? Looks shit. Looks like shit. Come on, big boy. Standards. That's better. Service, please. That's better. I think I had a bun. Are you going to hear Brickle down a bun? You know what I had? You need a top to the bun. What? Sorry? Top to the bun. Top to the bun? We only sent half of out. There was no bun on that. Let's put it on straight away. We'll argue after. <laughs> Buddy, veggies, please, and some fries. Is that other shepherd's pie for six coming for them? But for fuck's sake. Buddy can't even find a fucking doily, let alone cook a flounder. Sweating, dripping, now smashing plates, his own plates. No wonder Brian's a cranky bitch. It's day four, and Brian's loyalty to his family brings him back to work. You get a renewed respect for what Brian has to go through. It's a tough job. It's tough. And a mozzarella stick going. Salad. I gained a lot more respect for my brother. And all these times that I'm hard on him, and I get angry at him, and, and we fight about stuff, and I couldn't do what he does. With a new appreciation for Brian, Gordon decides to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with him. I knew you were an angry chef, frustrated, pissed off with your dad. I didn't know what you had on your shoulders before I walked in here. There's parts of me that feel for you in a way that I... I started to understand what's on your shoulders. And when you get pissed and frustrated, who do you talk to? Who, who do you open up to? I'm not gonna yeah. write to my little one. Have you thought about quitting and, and setting up elsewhere? Constantly. Yeah. I can't tell you how important your role is enough. I've probably faded out a little bit in stepping up my game and to where it used to be, so I, I, I might have lost some of the passion, which is, which is sad to say that because I didn't think that, but now it's kind of over my eyes a little bit about that. You've got to handle it a different way, in a way that you become the responsible one and fucking focus. If you've got the security of your food and you make this place rock, I promise you, that's going to give you stability to run this business for the next 20 years, OK? Thank you. Good man. Chef Ramsay definitely kicked me in the ass and got me excited to do what I'm doing. While Gordon has been dealing with the family's issues, his design team has been sprucing up the restaurant in anticipation of the relaunch. Oh, my gosh. You walked in and you felt like you were in your home. It was, it was so comfortable. It's bigger, huh? Holy Moses. Oh, look at the oh, booths. Yeah. Warmer. Yeah. Wow. I, I'm in shock. I'm never lost for words. <laughs> you know, this is overwhelming. Gorgeous. For Buddy, this was his big dream. It was very cool seeing that, just look on his face when we walked in there. Wow. I'm happy. We've been given a gift. Now it's our job to make this work, and we certainly will. It's beautiful. Holy Moses. This is so exciting. Uh, Chef Ramsay asked us to uh, hang outside for a little bit. Something you've always, always wanted, never had. Welcome to Finn McCall's, yes? Lovely. Right. Wow. wow. Established 2006 family restaurant. Isn't that beautiful? That yes. is gorgeous. Huh? Yes. That is a beautiful sign huh? right there. You can see that from 100 meters, right? I didn't know he would go to that extent and, and really go that extra mile for us. Can't miss this. It's tough to put into words how much that means to me and, and the, the rest of my family. Buddy, happy with the color? Holy Moses. Look at it. It was very emotional. We were all getting teary-eyed, and the four of us were just in awe. At least when you drive by now, you know what it is. Yeah, man. I'm 
thankful as an owner of a restaurant, and I'm also thankful as a dad. Although Finn McCool's has a new sign and a new look, it's the food that brings in the customers. So the first thing I did was got rid of two thirds of the menu because A, you know, the majority of it was frozen, B, it wasn't fresh. What's the point in having it on there? Whatever comes out of here has my name on it. And I don't want to mess this up. You've got to move with the seasons. Get rid of the dark, heavy sauces and line up a little bit. Gordon's new menu of contemporary pub food includes... The Guinness Pub Burger. And Gordon's own family recipe for shepherd's pie. And then the Feynman's Chicken. Chef Ramsay dumped the fry foods. They're gone. And to give the restaurant a new energy and to take some pressure off Brian in the kitchen, Gordon has introduced tableside service. Tonight we're going to be roasting a chicken. We roast it in the kitchen and we're going to cut it tableside. Don't be nervous about it. I can see it on your face yeah, already. <laughs> yep, don't. It creates a buzz in the dining room and it creates a bit of a excitement. Ready? Let's go. OK, you and I in the kitchen, let's go. Listen. We've been through a lot in this last week. It's been amazing. You know, we've learned a lot. We've seen a lot of things that we've done wrong. We've taught a lot of things and how to do things right. So we can come out of the blocks today, and people can leave here saying, oh my god, what a place. This is, this is huge. This is, this is a grand opening. Smile, make people Look at feel. Me. Have fun. Let's kick this in the ass. Make this happen. Yeah. That's all. Do it from top to bottom. All right. Anybody have any Do we issues? Have five minutes? Communicate. <laughs> five minutes. Go compose. Go compose. Hurry up. <laughs> the news of Gordon Ramsay's new menu has spread through the town, and the restaurant is fully booked for relaunch. All right, come on in. Gordon also persuaded the firemen to give Finn McCool's another chance. Don't look so nervous. Just smile. Even when it's going wrong, smile, OK? This table right here? Five in a high chair? Five in a high chair. This is their one big last chance of getting this thing right. Welcome to Finn McCool's. My name is Melissa, and I'll be your waitress tonight. This is our big chance. The whole community is coming here. You want a big one or a regular? I'm filled with excitement. I can't wait for this. This is what you live for. Tonight's going to be great. Brian, can I please put a ticket in? I'm thinking, all right, well, I got to have this, I got to have this. And then I didn't have time to think of what I got to have anymore because the tickets started coming. Would you like a boost? That'd be great. Thank great. you. Great. Come on in. We opened up the floodgates. What's all this food doing up here? Where's this going? Oh, man. Ooh, shit. It's a huge night at Finn McCool's. The locals have come out, and the place is packed. Tonight is, without question, a wonderful opportunity for the Mazio family. But if it doesn't go well, it could be a goodbye party instead of a relaunch. Tonight is the whole new menu. We have a lot of wonderful things on there. The seafood chow looks really good. Making the oysters on the ham shell. I don't want to see any sloppy fucking bowls. I want nice clean bowls, nice cooked food, and just pride tonight. All about fucking pride, yeah? Definitely. This is a big, big, big night tonight. When I first arrived at Finn McCall's, the restaurant had torn the family apart. Now we've got a new menu, new decor, a nice attitude, and they've got to run it as a business. We have got one big chance, and they have got to get it right. Adding to the pressure on the kitchen is the presence of the local food critic. This uh, critic represents Dan's paper. It's a local paper, so, you know, word gets out on the street, new menu, new decor. Hey, yeah? We got it. Come on, then. We got it. Wakey, wakey. Yeah. We got it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I need an hour. I've been waiting for an hour. This is not a fuck around, this food critic in here. You know that. We'll be on it. We're reviewing the restaurant. They want a good review. They should give us a taste. Yes. Rice pudding. You lost your smile. Go on. I know. Rice pudding. That one bat is gone. Was that it? Uh, yes. And start smiling. You've lost your smile. Chef is telling me you're losing your smile. You're losing your smile. How the hell could I smile right now? They've all been in there one hour, 45 minutes. I need the table back, yes? Absolutely. I'm like, oh my gosh, just please don't yell at me right now, because I'll cry, and then I'm going to have to go over to my table and toss a salad while I'm crying. I forgot my Caesar dressing. Can you grab me a thing of Caesar dressing? Sure. Brian, do you have the Caesar dressing or do we? They should have it. OK. Keep an eye on the salad for me. I'm going to run and grab it myself. It was just, it was nerve-wracking. I'm running around with the chicken with its head cut off. Where is the Caesar dressing? I'm going to go to the table without the dressing. Where is the dressing? Have you got it, buddy? I know. I was a little nervous there. Dressing there. right here. My bad, my bad. While the kitchen is overwhelmed, the customers are restless. I would think within over an hour, we would have our food on the table. While people in the dining room are waiting a long time for their food. I waited 
waited an hour. The fire chief is yet to be seated. I think we ordered before them. They're a little overcrowded for the fire code, you know what I mean? Every plate's important tonight. Every oyster, every plate, every customer, yes? Be really careful, because this is extremely hot. It, it, was, uh, it was frustrating, for sure, and uh, definitely embarrassing. Pretty much a three-ring circus broke out. Can I have half a lemon rather than salad on that, please? Yeah? Just a half a lemon, cut in half. Uh, give me one second, I'm sorry. I'm getting pissed now, yeah? Let's go. With Chef Ramsay screaming at me. Don't get fucking pissy with me. I definitely, once again, felt like a little kid getting yelled at. I've seen you work faster than this. Yes, it's a new menu, but you can move faster, yeah? Let's go. Two pot pies, a stew, and a shepherd pie. Come on, buddy. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Yummy. Yeah. That's good oyster. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Enjoy. Stay in control, Brian, yeah? Buddy, that's for your chicken. Buddy is nervous about going around and carving up those chickens tonight. Almost the one that got away. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. While Brian tries to keep the kitchen under control, Jason is busy putting out fires in the dining room. I apologize. He's working on a brand new menu with a packed dining room all at once. But if they can't handle the new menu, then they can't cook the food. So over here, we've got the new grand opening if they can't cook the food in the Food critic just started giving little brother some shit, so hey, prove him wrong. Come on. Do you need the review? I would love a review. We're seriously in the shit now. The bar's completely blocked and Jason's all over the place. He's now getting shit from customers. We've got to turn those tables. This is the critical point of this restaurant. They've got to turn this, wake up and speed up. Chef's honest opinion. Should I tell people at the bar they might not eat tonight? We're going, we're going. I've seen you, yeah, I've seen you work faster than this, yeah? Going, you got to fucking ignite that fire, yeah? We're, we're okay. Come on. 60 plus people here that are pissed off at the chief for getting them here tonight. And it ain't right. It was tough. It was tough. People were getting angry. I'm pissed. I'm leaving. What Chef Ramsay saw was, was a, a, a dining room that was a disaster. It was a horror show. An absolute horror show. Come on, Brian. You've got to step up now, my man. Chef's honest opinion. Should I tell people at the bar they might not eat tonight? Our restaurant was overwhelming. With the dining room in disarray and the kitchen in chaos, Gordon steps in. Come here. You've got to take control of your kitchen now. Let's look at it this way. We have to work, I mean, really dig deep to get these locals back on our side. So don't disintegrate. And the quicker you get to speed with what's going on here, this whole thing's going to start gelling a lot quicker. I got a little disheartened at first how it was turning out. But Chef Ramsay wanted me to, to be able to show that I could do it. Give it some fire. Let's go. The family begins to get it together, and the food is once again leaving the kitchen. But they face another critical test, the food critic. I highly recommend the chicken or the shepherd's pie tonight. OK? okay. If I had to choose between the potato and bacon or the mulligatawny, what would I do? Mulligatawny. All right. Yeah. Let's get breakfast stew, shepherd's pie. Perfect. Every customer's your critic, but this one is a food critic, yeah? I'm, I'm sorry about the delay. The shepherd's pie is excellent. Any problems, just throw a glass at someone. Yeah, no worries. Why don't I take this? You take that. But I have to take this, too. I can take that, too. Okay. Be very careful not to touch that. Critics' tables, she thought the shepherd's pie delicious. Beautiful. Yeah. Now, this is where this pub starts to make money. It's turning tables for the second time. The atmosphere is electric. No matter how much money you got in the Hamptons, you can't buy an atmosphere like this. Extraordinary. We can put these two soups out here. We're on it. Come We're on, on it. it. Buddy. Yes. Yes, I said I was doing this. I told you I was going to pack the place, yes? Yes, sir. So in 24 hours, hello, the word spread, and every fucker turned up with their dog. Yeah? Do me a favor. Yes. Stay for a while. Stay for a while. <laughs> the dinner service ends successfully. 
customers are leaving satisfied, and the family proved that they can make it work, at least for one night. Fourteen years of working in decent places and crappy places, and to try to get everything I can to have somebody like that show you. Awesome. It's you know it's what I wanted to do for a long time, and I just faded away. I did you know, just came in and went through the motions, and then for him to come in, you know, tell me that I needed to get back into it, and he actually did. He you know made me feel like. Uh, I wanted to cook again. No, 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 guys. Let me tell you what I saw, and this is the God's honest truth. I saw a family come together. There was a buzz. Everybody felt it, you know, and we were a family again. The first and foremost important thing to think about tomorrow, do not stop supporting each other, because you've got a great family. And when it works, it's beautiful. Good night. Chef? Gordon Ramsay refers to me as a chef. It blows my mind. Don't you stop, big boy. Yes? Thank you. Hey, cocky fucker. <laughs> huh? He's put us to the test. It was very rewarding to hear a chef tell us what a good job we did. Smile, you, yes? Yes. 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 Detective my ass. Are you sure? <laughs> huh? <laughs> we appreciate what he did. All the work that he did didn't fall on deaf ears. I saw a family come together. I was proud. Really proud. You're a great dad. Uh, you got a heart of gold and two great sons. Cheers. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. you know, sometimes doing these can be a right pain in the ass. I have to say, this one was a joy because this family now are united and they deserve to be successful. Two months later, and Finn McCool's is on its way to establishing itself as a fun, happening family restaurant. Clams are just delicious. Really good. Welcome to Finn McCool's. This is the greatest thing in the world. The greatest thing has happened. The shepherd's pie is the talk of the town and the pride of the local community. Brian and Jason have become quite the team, both striving for excellence and supporting each other. You got it? Yeah. You sure? Beat it. I love my brother to death. Uh, no question. As for Buddy, he finally cashed his first paycheck. And at last, Irish eyes are smiling. I have two sons that are phenomenal. I have a great staff. That's what, that's what it's about. That's why we're here. This is what we planned for. I love it.